Thank you for the life of each and every one whom the Lord used to minister to us this afternoon. Amen. Before we start, I just want to once again greet each and every one with the greetings of uh, joy, with the greetings of peace. Shalom. Amen. Can you greet each and every one? Greet your neighbor. Tell them shalom. Shalom. Hallelujah. Our Savior and Master Jesus Christ is a Jewish carpenter. And that is his way of greeting people. So I know and I do believe that uh, at the very end of days, we will all be using that phrase. Amen. So shalom. Shalom. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord Jesus. Once again, my dear brothers and sisters, we have so much to thank the Lord for. Amen. The fact that the Lord has allowed us to gather here in peace and quiet and security to praise and worship the Lord. Let us not be complacent because right here, I mean right now and other parts of the world, they are living in fear. And other parts of the, the world, they are waiting for that siren to be turned on. And they will rush to those um, uh, bomb shelters and bunkers. So let us not be complacent of the time, the opportunity, and the many privileges that the Lord has given us to enjoy. Amen, church? And I can see... Uh, we have visitors. Welcome, Albert and your friends. Um, uh, in behalf of the church, we are blessed. We are glad that you are able to spend the afternoon with us. And it is our prayer that uh, you will enjoy uh, each and everyone's company, not only physically, but most importantly, spiritually. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Can I invite each and every one to stand up to welcome the word of the Lord? And if you please help us, boys, um, we are going to use, uh, we're going to use the uh, um, uh, Nehemiah chapter 1 this afternoon. Is it there? Is it projected? The word of the Lord. Nehemiah chapter 1, we're going to read the whole chapter. The words of Nehemiah, son of Hakaliah. In the month of Kislev, that's the ninth month in Hebrew calendar, in the month of Kislev, in the twenty-eighth year, while I was in the citadel of Susa, so Susa is the old city of Sushan. If you look at the map of Iran, it's now called Sushan. So we're talking about the old Persian kingdom and we're talking about the country of Iran, the city of Sushan, or in the Bible it says in here, Susa. Hanani, one of my brothers, came from Judah with some other men. And I questioned them about the Jewish remnants that survived the exile and also about Jerusalem. They said to me, those who survived the exile and are back in the provinces are in great trouble and disgrace. The wall of Jerusalem is broken down and its gates have been burned with fire. When I heard these things, I sat down and wept. For some days, I mourned and fasted and prayed before God of heaven. Then I said, O Lord, God of heaven, how great and awesome God, who keeps his covenant of love with those who love him and who obey his commands. Let your ear be attentive and your eyes open to hear the prayer your servant is praying before you day and night for your servants the people of Israel. I confess the sins we 
Israelites, including myself in my father's house, have committed against you. We have acted very wickedly towards you. We have not obeyed the commands, decrees, and laws you gave your servant Moses. Remember the instruction you gave your servant Moses saying, If you are faithful, unfaithful I should say, I will scatter among I will scatter you among the nations. But if you return to me and obey my commands, then even if your exiled people are at the farthest horizon, I will gather them from there and bring them to the place I have chosen as a dwelling for my name. They are your servants and your people, whom you redeem by your great strength and your mighty hand. O Lord, let your ear be attentive to the prayer of this your servant, and to the prayer of your servants who delight in revering your name. Give your servant success today by granting him favor in the presence of this man. I, Nehemiah, was cupbearer to the king. Let us pray. Most gracious Lord and heavenly Father, indeed Lord, as a people of your pasture, we will have no rest, Father God. Day and night, Lord, we will pursue you. And Father God, it's just a case of teaching us. It's just a case, Father God, of advising us on ways and means how to do so. So Father, thank you because this is a wonderful opportunity and privilege for us not only to listen to your words, not only, Father, that we may learn from you, not only, Father God, that we will uh, uh, get acquainted more of who you are, but most importantly, I pray, O Lord, that we may gain that knowledge and heavenly wisdom and understanding so that we may live our life in a manner and in accordance, Father God, as you have prescribed for us. Lord, your servant continues to humble himself, hide him behind you, clothe him with your blood, O Lord, so that my brothers and sisters, people online, won't just be mere looking and staring and listening, Father God, to this lowly person in front. But Father, may we consider behind, Lord God, you who sent this lowly person. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you very much for your patience. Let's please sit down. If you're like me and uh, you take down notes during messages or sermon, and sometimes it's easier to understand if we put a catalog. So the title of our message today, it could either be Rebuilding the Walls or it could simply be how to pray a prayer that can catch the attention of God. So it could either be, Amen, church. And once again, uh, to the Mutlu family, mother and daughter, welcome. We miss you. Hallelujah. So my dear brothers and sisters, we're talking about walls. And walls in our lives symbolizes two things. The first symbol of walls, wall can act as an entrapment. Walls can act as an imprisonment. Walls can act as an element of separation, an element of division. And these are the kind of walls that we need to tear down. These are the kind of walls that we pray for the Lord to break down. You know, just as the walls in the temple, that curtain thick wall in the temple that separates the presence of God and the people during that time, 
that when Jesus Christ was crucified on the cross, and Jesus Christ shouted in a loud voice and say, It is finished. In Greek, it says, Tetelestai. Or in Latin, it says in there, Consumatum est. What happened to that wall that separates the presence of God and the people? It was torn down. Amen, church. Just like the walls that contain Paul and Silas in prison. They were in prison because of preaching, teaching the word of God in the book of Acts. But when they were praising and worshiping the Lord, those walls crumbled because of the power of God. So my dear brothers and sisters, the first, we'll talk about this in more details at a later meeting. That walls acts as an element of separation, as an element of division, as an element of entrapment, as an element of imprisonment. And I cannot give emphasis enough. Those are the kind of walls that as people of God, as a community of God, that we need to tear down and break down. Amen, church? Are you with me? But today we are going to talk about the second symbol of walls. And that is, my dear brothers and sisters, wall can serve as a protection. Walls can serve as a security. It can serve as a shelter. It can serve as a sense of belongingness. If you imagine the old kingdoms before, even in the UK, you can find a lot of things. If you go to old cities and towns, you can see a big house, palace, surrounded by walls. And all the subject live inside the wall. Because like I say, walls can also serve as a protection, security, shelter, and sense of belongingness. And these are the kind of walls that we need to rebuild. These are the kind of walls that we need to look after. These are the kind of walls that we need to re-strengthen. These are the kind of walls that we need to rebuild. Amen, church. So, if we go back to history, now, Brother Ramon started it, yeah? That uh, the life of Joseph, because of the life of Joseph, the people of Israel were blessed. They went to Egypt because of the life of Joseph. The Pharaoh during that time blessed Israel into prosperity. But when Israel began to forget about the Lord, when Israel became complacent on the blessing, on the protection, and the covering of the Lord, what happened in Egypt, my dear brothers and sisters, many years passed when kings, pharaohs, who don't know about Joseph, came to power, what did they do? They enslaved the people of Israel. Amen. And we know that God raised up a man called Moses. We heard Nehemiah talking about Moses in this passage that we read. And what? who is Moses? Moses is the man God used as an agent to free the people of Israel out of the bondage in Egypt. Amen? We all know our Bible. But same thing again, my dear brothers and sisters, when they are back in the promised land, when they are back in the country, in the land, in the nation that God promised them, what happened? They became complacent again. They forget about the Lord again. They enjoy the blessing and they forget about the blessing giver. Hello, you are with me, church? Amen. And so what happened, my dear brothers and sisters? 
Because of the people of Israel forgot about the Lord, because of their idolatry, because of their disobedience to the Lord, Lord has the Lord has to use an external kingdom, the kingdom of Babylon, headed by the king Nebuchadnezzar. What happened? They came to Jerusalem and ransacked Jerusalem. They conquered Jerusalem. Destroyed Jerusalem. They destroyed the temple of God. Not only the temple of God, but the walls that serve as a protection, security, the walls that serves as a sense of community. They destroy it. And what did they do? Those people that they feel, they think are useful, they took them to Babylon to be slave, to be servant, my dear brothers and sisters. It is then when begin remembering the Lord again. It is then when people begin crying to the Lord once again. So here we find ourselves in the life of Nehemiah. Nehemiah, it says in there, works as a cupbearer for the king. For the king that time, my dear brothers and sisters. Amen? So the book of Nehemiah is about rebuilding. Amen, church? The book of Nehemiah is about rebuilding. If we think about the book, the life of Ezra, he is the instrument of the Lord to rebuild the temple. But now we are talking about the walls. And if we think about Nehemiah, we can think about the walls of Jerusalem. He is the man, the person that the Lord used in rebuilding the temple. I mean the, the walls of the city. So if we think about Nehemiah, the message of the book of Nehemiah is about rebuilding that walls, my dear brothers and sisters. And we can draw a parallel lines in our lives. Isn't it? The Bible is more than just a historical book. The Bible is the Word of God. And because it's the Word of God, if you like, they say that it's God's love letter to the people that He loved. And do you know those people that God loves? What is your name, my uh, brother in uh, white? Uh, yeah. Arno. And uh, you? What's the other? Alexis. Alexis and Arno. Do you know who are the people that God loves? Arno and Alexis and including each and every one of you here. Amen. Amen. So the word of the Lord is written for each and every one. Amen. So if we think about the book of Nehemiah about rebuilding that walls, we can draw a parallel line in our lives. What are the area in our lives that needs rebuilding? What are the area in our lives that needs rebuilding? And I believe that they all fall, whatever areas of those lives, they all fall under one of this category. Number one is our personal relationship with the Lord. Amen, church? Our personal relationship with the Lord. Number two, my dear brothers and sisters, how do we view ourselves as a creation of God? And number three is what is our relationship with our fellow men? Whether we're talking about family, work, community, they all fall under one of those categories. So my dear brothers and sisters, how are we to rebuild those areas in our life? Is our relationship with the Lord, 
Is the way we perceive ourselves as a creation of God? Is our relationship with our fellow men needs rebuilding? Is it strong? Is it standing firm? Is it moot? Is it in decay? Is it weakening? That's the reason why that the Lord is giving us this message this afternoon. Not only to expose the situation, but through the life of Nehemiah, the wall builder, that the Lord can teach us, encourage us, open our eyes to start rebuilding what needs to be rebuilt. Amen, church. Is our relationship with the Lord needs rebuilding? If that's what's going to be rebuilt after this message, then let's come to the Lord. It's all about coming to the Lord and humbly admitting that, Lord, I need my relationship with you to be rebuilt. How about you as a person? How about you as a person? Are you happy with your situation at the moment? Are you happy with your circumstances at the moment? And the prayer of Apostle Paul to the church in Colossae, I want to encourage us as well. That Apostle Paul knows the need of the people of the church of Colossae. And Apostle Paul means it. Apostle Paul wants all the blessing. Apostle Paul wants all the goodness of the Lord to come to the church. But there's always a greater prayer. The greater prayer of Apostle Paul to the church of Colossae is that the Lord enrich their faith greatly. That the Lord gave them heavenly wisdom and understanding to enable them, like Brother Lester said, to live the life of a believer. To be the salt and light that the Lord has intended for us to be. Amen, church. And number three, our relationship with our fellow men. Who are my neighbors, the Lord says. Your neighbor is all the people outside yourself. Whether it be your wife, your husband, your parents, your children, your brothers and sisters, all of us in here are neighbors. Amen, church. So, let us be encouraged by the life of Nehemiah this afternoon. Let us be encouraged by a man called Nehemiah who acted. And when Nehemiah acted, he built, he rebuilt the walls. But more than that, he rebuilt a nation, the nation of Israel. And I know and I do believe that that is the key. You know the prayer of Sister Lorna earlier? That is the key. The prayer of Brother Ramon earlier? That is the key. We so joyfully waiting for the great appearing of the Lord. Amen. Everything that we are doing in these current times is about investment of the future. Amen, church. It's about investment of the future. But in order for us to be able to reach from here to the future, we need to be able to walk in a manner that the Lord prescribed and called for us. So it be that the Lord put a hedge of wall around us so that we can focus on the Lord. Amen. So today, this afternoon, my dear brothers and sisters, I want us to be encouraged upon the life of Nehemiah. I want us to learn how to pray. Can somebody say, how to pray? How to pray when there seems to be no human solution to our problems. Do you guys know, I'm sure you, you already know how to pray. 
But let us be encouraged. I'm just encouraged today. How did Nehemiah pray? Why did the Lord answer him? The Lord allowed him to rebuild a wall and rebuild a nation, my dear brothers and sisters. And it is my prayer that the Lord will raise up among us man and woman, children of God, with the Spirit like unto Nehemiah. Amen, church. Let that be me, O God. Let that be me, O Lord. Have the desire, church. Have the burden. No one has imposed it to upon Nehemiah. Wala pong nag-utos kay Nehemiah. Wala pong nag-educate na sabi, Nehemiah, it is you. You. No. Nehemiah desired for it. Nehemiah desired for it, my dear brothers and sisters. Amen. In 1 Corinthians chapter 14, isn't it? It says that we need to eagerly desire these things. Amen. So it is my prayer that the Lord will raise up from among us or all of us and give us the spirit like unto Nehemiah. Na sana ibigay ng Panginoon yung spirito na ibinigay niya kay Nehemiah for us to eagerly desire to have that burden, my dear brothers and sisters. Do you want to be that person for the Lord? Do you want to be that person for the Lord? People of God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So when someone came from the province of Judah or Israel, Nehemiah asked, sabi niya rito sa verse 3, One of my brothers, Hanani, came from Judah and some men, and I questioned them about the Jewish remnant, the people who remained in Israel during that time who survived the exile. And they said to Nehemiah, those who survived the exile are back in the provinces. They are in great trouble and disgrace. The wall of Jerusalem is broken down and its gates have been burned with fire. Amen, church. Upon hearing this news, something in Nehemiah has been moved. Amen, church. I pray that right now that the Lord is moving in your very core, in your very belly and eagerly desiring and eagerly praying that Lord, I desire that spirit like unto Nehemiah. I desire that spirit like unto Nehemiah. So my dear brothers and sisters, upon hearing that is sad news, amen church? That is sad news. And it will make someone na magalit. It will make someone to be upset. But what did it brought Nehemiah? What was Nehemiah's reaction in verse 4? When I heard these things, I sat down and wept. Amen. I sat down and wept. Not only that, for some days, Nehemiah mourned and fasted and prayed before God, my dear brothers and sisters. Upon hearing that news, something in Nehemiah has been steered. Upon hearing that news, something in Nehemiah has been born out of that burden. But even with Nehemiah's power, even with Nehemiah's special during that time, he is a cupbearer. 
to the king. He has a personal relationship to the king. He can come near the king every time and any time that he pleased. He can come and pwede niyang bulungan yung king any time that he pleased. That's how close a cupbearer to the king is. But even Nehemiah willed that power. Even Nehemiah willed that capacity. What did Nehemiah do first and foremost? Apart from weeping and lamenting about, about that sad news, but what did he do? Was he like a spring who stood up and went? No. He spent few days praying and fasting. Amen, church. And as a believer, lesson number one, yun sana yung matutunan natin. You want to apply for a job, you like to move for a job, you want to get married, you want to do this, you want to do that. The first thing that you do, is not to seek for that right person. The first thing that you do, spend moment with the Lord. Pray and fast. Amen, church? Pray and fast. We want to be known as the people na hindi pwedeng makagalaw without first consulting the Lord. You know, Christian nowadays, what do they do? They want to do this, this and that. They do it. And then they ask the Lord, Lord, approve this. We need to be known as a Christian who involved the Lord from planning, from drawing until execution. Amen, church. That's what the life of Nehemiah is teaching us. Nehemiah wants to know what he wants to do, but he, before he did anything before he did prepare any steps, my dear brothers and sisters, inuna niya ang Panginoon. Importante ang Panginoon. He fasted. He prayed for day and night. Amen, church. And in Nehemiah's prayer, this is what he has done. Number one, my dear brothers and sisters, Nehemiah acknowledged the greatness of God. Oh God of heaven, O oh Lord God of heaven, the great and awesome God who keep his covenant to love with those who love him and obey his commands, let your ear be attentive and your, your eyes open to hear the prayer your servant is praying before you day and night for your servant, the people of Israel. My dear brothers and sisters, number one, Nehemiah acknowledged the greatness of God. In the midst of his weeping and mourning, what was Nehemiah doing? Help me here. In the midst of Nehemiah weeping and mourning, what was he doing? He was praising, he was worshiping the Lord. Amen, church. In the midst of his deep pain, he was fasting. He was praying, my dear brothers and sisters. And that's the lesson number two. If we want to be a wall builder, if we want to be a nation builder, we need to be people who acknowledge the greatness of God. We need to be people who praise and worship God in spite of the pain. In spite of the pain. Amen, church? If we want to be a nation builder, if we want, I mean, we know, my dear brothers and sisters, that this country of UK needs to be rebuilt spiritually. Amen, church? And if you want to become an emissary of that, we need to be people who prioritize the Lord. Our message last time, we ought to be people who dwells in the Lord. People who seek the Lord, make the Lord as our hiding place. Amen, church. Psalms 32, 7, our passage last week, You are my hiding place, O God. 
Because you are my hiding place, you protect me from trouble and surround me with songs of deliverance. Amen, church. Sino ang may pangangailangan dito? Who is desperately in need of the Lord? Just like Nehemiah during that time. And if we make the Lord our hiding place, the Lord is greater than your circumstances. Amen, church? The Lord is greater than our situation. If the Lord is greater than your circumstance and situation, just like Nehemiah showed us today, then, my dear brothers and sisters, praising and worshiping God should not be limited by our situation. Amen? Coming to church should not be limited by our situation. Serving the Lord should not be limited by our situation. Amen? Because going back to the rule one, God is greater than my situation. Amen, church? Does it make sense po? Amen? Amen. Serving God, coming to God, praising and worshiping God is not dependent on our circumstance, my dear brothers and sisters. It will always be founded in the fact that He is God, He is Lord, and you are His subject, and you are His creation, and you are made to worship the Lord. Amen, church. You are made to glorify the Lord. If we make the Lord our dwelling, our fortress, God is way bigger than the problems that we have. Amen, church? And dapat, ito po yung ipaalala natin sa ating sarili. This is what we ought to remind ourselves always, that God is bigger and greater than our situation, than our circumstance. Amen, church? When you acknowledge that God is great, that God is almighty, God is the sovereign creator, we are putting ourselves in line with the perspective of God. Amen. And whatever it is that will come after that, it may hell come break loose. But like what I have said last time, the best place to be in when chaos begins to fall is when you are in the presence of God. When your life is aligned with God. Amen, church. Psalms 34, verse 1 to 4, it says in there, I will extol the Lord at all times. Children, can you say at all times? Amen. I will worship the Lord at all times. At all times meaning it's not subject to my situation and circumstance. At all times meaning just like Paul and Silas, I may be in the harsh treatment in condition of jail, but I will worship the Lord. Amen. I will extol the Lord. Joseph. Joseph was innocent. <laughs> Joseph was innocent and yet he is in the harsh and difficult situation of jail. But he was singing, I will extol the Lord at all times. Amen, church. Even your prayer is not being answered, extol the Lord. Even your prayer of healing is not coming, extol the Lord. Amen. Amen. I will extol the Lord at all times. His praise will always be on my lips. Amen, church. Nehemiah was in the point of weeping, in the point of crying, but still, even Nehemiah is in all his right. Na magmura siguro, but no. The praise of God is in his lips. Amen. Amen. 
I will glorify the Lord. Let the afflicted hear and rejoice. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us exalt His name together. I sought the Lord and He answered me. And He delivered me from all my fears. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, nandoon na pala yung sikreto. Anyone who is in fear, anyone who is anxious, anyone who has circumstance and situation that they feel is way beyond and above them, the secret is, let us glorify the Lord. Let us exalt His name. Let us sought the Lord. And the Lord will answer us by lifting us from all those miseries. Amen, church. When Sister Lorna was giving a testimony and she sought the Lord, it is not that all of a sudden the situation changed. No. What did the Lord gave by answering is the Lord gave Lorna and her family the peace of God that transcend all understanding. Amen, church. Amen. In verse 6 to 7, it says in here, let's pay attention here, because this is a very powerful eye-opener that all of us must learn. Amen, church. Touch the people next to you to wake them up. Touch the people next to you to draw their attention and tell the people next to you, you must learn from this. You must learn from this. Amen. You must learn from this. We must learn from this, my dear brothers and sisters. Pay attention. What we, do we need to learn? When Nehemiah was praying, ito yung sabi niya. This is what he said to the Lord. Lord, I confess the sins we Israelites, including myself in my father's house, have committed against you. We have acted very wickedly towards you. We have not obeyed the commands, decrees, and laws you give your servant Moses. It's a very powerful prayer. Because you know why? If you look at the life of Nehemiah, it is very interesting to note that Nehemiah was actually born during exile. Nehemiah was born during exile. Ano naman ang pakialam ni Nehemiah sa kasalanan ng mga taong nauna sa kanya? Ano naman ang kasalanan ni Nehemiah sa kasalanan ng kanyang mga kababayan? For me, Nehemiah is innocent. He was born generation after itong mga idolater, after itong mga disobedient Israelite. Nehemiah was born in the kingdom of Persia. He was never in Israel. But his prayer is, he included himself. He took responsibility. He says, I have sinned. I am responsible. I am wrong. He acknowledged the wickedness and disobedience. My dear brothers and sisters, batu-batu sa langit ang tamaan, aaray. Aray! Because for us, it is very easy to point fingers at anyone else and say, He is at fault. She is at fault. He is the problem. She is the problem. But as a people of God, my dear brothers and sisters, when you come to prayer, you are standing in the presence of the Lord. And when you are standing in the presence of the Lord, come as you are. You are a sinner. No one is righteous. Amen, church. Isaiah chapter six, 64 verse 6, it says in there that, you know, our righteous acts that we tend to project, they are filthy rags. They are filthy rags. 
So when we come to the Lord, just come as we are. That's the reason why when the Lord Jesus taught us the model prayer, isn't it? It teaches us to come with a humble heart, with a petition of, Lord, forgive me. Lord, forgive me. Amen, church. We must learn from this. We must learn from this. In verse 10, Nehemiah reminded God of his promise. Did Nehemiah need to jog the memory of God? Does God forget stuff that he needs reminding? No, he doesn't, my dear brothers and sisters. So why then that in the Bible, it's a widely acceptable practice that it says in the Bible, remind the promises of the Lord. Why did they remind the promises of the Lord? Why did they brought the Lord His promises? The Lord is all-knowing. The Lord never forgets. So why is it very important? What do we need to learn in here? Why do we need to remind God something when we pray? And this is one of the prayer misconceptions. That when we come to the Lord and remind the word of God in prayer, it is not because God is forgetful. Because in reminding God, my dear brothers and sisters, in a way, we are building up ourselves. In a way, it is us that needs reminding. Amen. In a way, it is saying to the Lord that, Lord, I am aware of your promises made. And I am aware, O God, that these promises are given for me. Amen, church. So when you come to the Lord with His words, it is not reminding Him because He forgets. It is not for the sake of God to remember it is, our, it is for our sake to remember that our God is a covenant-keeping God. Amen, church? When you go and meet a lawyer, your lawyer, and you show them what agreement there is, it is not to remind them something that they do not know. It is to tell them that you know where you are coming from. Amen, church? So when we remind God of His words, it is not for His sake. It is for our own sake, my dear brothers and sisters. In order for us to be encouraged and reminded that the God that we are coming to is not only the God who answers prayer, it is not only the God that we can come and speak with, but the God who keeps His covenant and all this word is the covenant of God with man, my dear brothers and sisters. Amen, church. We are the one who will benefit if we remind God our covenant. Amen. So don't hold back. Come to the Lord. People who are desperately Asking the Lord, people who are needs, wants to desperately be delivered, people who wants that personal desire with the Lord na hindi na sasagot, bring your covenant with God. Bring your covenant with God. Amen, church. In verse 11, the last verse, my dear brothers and sisters, after going through all this, and then, Diba? He prayed to the Lord kung ano yung gusto niyang mangyari. He prayed to the Lord what is it that He wants to happen. He prayed boldly. So my dear brothers and sisters, the Nehemiah is teaching us a powerful way of praying to the Lord. That coming to the Lord sometimes hindi palaging straightforward na Lord, magwi-withdraw ako ng limang daan. 
Lord, magwi-withdraw ako ng isang libo. Diba? Nehemiah approached the Lord boldly. Nehemiah was about to go to the king and tell the king what he wants. But before that, he came to the Lord and pray about it. Amen, church. Nehemiah was about to approach the king and tell the king the desire of his heart. So he prayed to the Lord boldly. Oh, Panginoon, Panginoon, pakinggan nawa ng iyong tainga ang panalangin ng iyong lingkod at sa panalangin ng mga lingkod na nalulugod sa paggalang sa iyong pangalan. Take note, ano yung sabi ni Nehemiah? Ibigay mo sa akin ang tagumpay ngayon. Ibigay mo sa akin ang tagumpay ngayon sa pamamagitan ng pagbibigay ng pabor sa taong itong aking haharapin. It's a bold prayer. Amen, church. The Lord has its own time frame. The Lord has its own time frame. Hindi natin pwedeng diktahan ng Panginoon. But see how bold Nehemiah is. Lord, ibigay mo sa akin ngayon. Praying boldly for the Lord, mga kapatid. Amen, church. And again, another prayer misconception. Na in praying, my dear brothers and sisters, hindi po natin pinapangunahan ng Panginoon. It's not because nasabi natin na Lord, ibigay mo sa amin ngayon ang aming hinihiling. It does not mean, my dear brothers and sisters, na pinapangunahan natin ng Panginoon. No, Matthew 6.8 The Lord Jesus Christ said, Before we ask the Lord of anything, He knows it already. Amen. Alam ng Panginoon yung ating pangangailangan na bago natin hilingin sa Panginoon ang ating pangangailangan, alam niya na. Do you agree? Do you believe? It's the word of the Lord. Pero kung ganun pala, bakit kailangan nating humingi? Bakit kailangan nating magdasal? Bakit kailangan nating sabihin sa Panginoon kung ano ang ating kailangan? My dear brothers and sisters, when we pray, when we come to the Lord and say, Lord, ito ang gusto ko. Ito, 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 ito. It is not about informing God your need, my dear brothers and sisters. The Lord knows your needs. He does not need to be told of your needs. You do not need to tell the Lord your needs. Pero bakit kailangan nating sabihin, Panginoon, this, this, this in that, my dear brothers and sisters? Because in doing that, we are not informing of the Lord of our needs. In doing that, we are inviting the Lord to come into our situations. Amen, church. By doing that, we are inviting the Lord to come into our situations. Again, like I say, going back to the prayer of Apostle Paul to the church in Colossae. Alam ng Panginoon ang kanilang kailangan. They need blessing. They need provision. But ano yung pinagdasal ni Apostle Paul? Apostle Paul, pray as the Lord of the wisdom, the heavenly understanding, upang ang mga taong ito ay maipamuhay nila ang kanilang pananampalataya. Amen, church. The Lord knows what we need. But sabi niya rito mga kapatid sa James chapter 4 verse 2, You do not have it because you do not ask for it. Amen, church. Alam ng Panginoon ang ating kailangan. Bakit hindi niya ibinibigay? Dahil hindi natin hinihingi. The promise of the Lord in the Bible is like gifts. 
When we say gift, it's been purchased. It's been purchased by the most precious life of our Lord. It's already been wrapped. It's already been given. All you need to do is you receive it. People have received it, but they are yet to open it. People have received it, opened the gift, but they are yet to use it. Amen, church? Ganun din po ang Panginoon. That is the reason why, my dear brothers and sisters, Matthew chapter 7, verse 7 to 8, sabi natin, Ask, and it shall be given to you. Seek, and you will find it. Knock, and it will be open for you. Amen, church. The Lord wants to give you your need. He knows your need. The Lord wants to reveal Himself in His words to you. He knows your need. The Lord wants to open those doors for you because you are outside. The Lord knows your needs. But He is waiting for you to ask. He is waiting for you to seek. He is waiting for you to knock, my dear brothers and sisters. So that's the reason why that when we pray, just like Nehemiah, it is always prayer protocol as well to be specific sa ating prayer. Alam ng Panginoon ng pangangailangan natin, but it is very important for us to be specific. Amen. If you read the word, and this will be the last, if you read the word of the Lord in Matthew chapter 20, verses 30 to 34. Anyone familiar with this story? This is the story of blind man Bartimaeus, my dear brothers and sisters. It says in here, Two blind men were sitting by the roadside, and when they heard that Jesus was going by, they shouted, Lord, Son of David, have mercy on us. The crowd rebuked them and told them to be quiet, but they shouted all the more louder, Lord, Son of David, have mercy on us. Jesus spotted and called them. Jesus know that they are blind. Jesus know that they are in need of healing. Jesus know that they are in need of their sight restoring. Pero ano yung sinabi ng Panginoong Heso Kristo? Anyone? What do you want me to do for you? Amen, church. Well, baka during that time, ang gusto lang pala nila is biscuit in juice. That's the reason why that even the Lord knows what we need. The Lord knows kung ano yung kailangan mo kapatid. Alam, nakikita ng Panginoon yung lumbay sa iyong puso. Nakikita ng Panginoon yung pighati, hirap. Nakikita ng Panginoon yung kakapusan ng family sa Pilipinas. Nakikita ng Panginoon yung pangangailangan ng kagalingan. Nakikita ng Panginoon, even kay Sister Lorna, nakikita ng Panginoon yung pighati, dulot ng pagkamatay ng kanyang kapatid. But we must come to the Lord and say, Na Lord, ibigay mo sa akin yung kapayapaan. Ibigay mo sa akin yung comfort. Nakikita ng Panginoon yung kailangan natin na trabaho. as the Lord. The Lord, ito yung gusto kong trabaho. Lord, ipakita mo sa akin yung gusto kong trabaho. Lord, nabibigatan na ako. Pagaanin mo ang sitwasyon ko. Let us ask the Lord, my dear brothers and sisters. Because when we ask the Lord, hindi po dahil hindi niya alam. Listen, my dear brothers and sisters. When we ask the Lord, it is us telling the Lord, na Lord, nakadepende ako sa iyo. Na Lord, ikaw lamang ang makakagaan nito. Na Lord, itong sugat sa pa ako, maski hindi ko gamutin, maski hindi ko galawin, according to science, hindi ako diabetic, I'll just maintain cleanliness, gagaling yan. Salamat sa science, salamat sa karunungan, 
But even yung maliit na sugat, ipinagdasal mo sa Panginoon. Salamat, Panginoon. Ikaw ang nagpagaling. Amen, church. Hallelujah. And sometimes the Lord will allow walls in our life to be compromised. To be weakened. Katulad ng tao ng Israel because of our disobedience to the Lord. He allows situation in our life, adverse circumstances, conflict, storms, time of distress, in order for us to come to Him. Bumalik po tayo sa Panginoon. And I pray that Nehemiah is building a raising people and servants in here with a spirit like Nehemiah. Na pag nakikita natin yung pangangailangan, tayo yung maglapit sa Panginoon. Ano naman ang pakialam ko dyan? Hindi naman ako involved dyan. Ano naman ang pakialam ko dyan? Wala akong kamalay-malay dyan. But just like Nehemiah, he has that burden to bring it to the Lord. Amen, church. So in our lives, we have many walls that we need to rebuild. We have many walls that we need to re-strengthen. We have many walls that we need to patch up. Because my dear brothers and sisters, ano yung wall na yan? Is it our personal direct relationship with the Lord? Is it our personal relationship with ourselves pertaining sa relasyon natin sa Panginoon? and our relationship with our brothers and sisters. Amen. So be encouraged by the life of Nehemiah. Amen po. Let us stand up, church. <coughs> Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. It is my prayer na the Lord will complete His message sa ating buhay. Amen. It is my prayer na it is the, about the word of the Lord. Wala akong pwedeng sabihin, wala akong pwedeng gawin to change the situation, to better the situation. I am just a mere messenger. And it is my prayer that the Holy Spirit will complete the message upon the life of each and everyone this afternoon. Amen. Sige, manatili po tayo sa presensya ng Panginoon. Gap, can you please? Sige, manatili po tayo sa presensya ng Panginoon. Hallelujah, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Let's put the Lord sa ating puso, sa ating isip. Let us dwell in the presence of God this afternoon. And the word of the Lord in Luke chapter 18 verse 1 says that men ought to pray at all times. So lumapit po tayo sa Panginoon. Huwag tayong magsawa. Let us not faint in praying. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. Ama, ibinabalik namin sa iyo ang iyong mga salita. Ibinibigay namin sa iyo ang iyong mga salita, O Panginoong Jesus. Pakabanalin mo, pakabasbasin mo ang pagkakabanggit at pagkakaturo ng iyong mga salita. Quicken it upon the life, upon the heart, of each and every one, O God. Indeed, Lord, like unto Nehemiah, forgive us of all our sins, O God. Forgive us, O Lord, of our complacency. Forgive us, O God, on those many and innumerable times when we were disobedient from you when we were far from you. 
on those numerous times where we have chosen to depart from you. Forgive us, O God. Lord, like unto Nehemiah, Father, we bring your words unto you. Acknowledge your word, O God. As a church, individually, incorporately, we seek you with one mind. We seek you with one heart, O God. So Lord, answer us. Answer your people, O God. Hallelujah. Father, reveal a burden upon the life of each and every one to desire, to declare, O God, na sabihin sa'yo, i-declara sa'yo, hilingin sa'yo na sabihin, Lord, give me a spirit like unto Nehemiah. I can see, O God, that my relationship with you needs strengthening. I can see, O God, that my personal standing with you needs strengthening. I can see that my relationship with my brothers and sisters and with my neighbors needs strengthening. Lord, I can see that this church where you have put me into needs strengthening. So Lord, I desire that spirit like unto Nehemiah be upon me. Be upon me. And to all the people of God who prayed in desire for that. Lord, thank you so much for this afternoon. Father God, Ikaw ang magkompleto sa iyong mensahe sa buhay ng mga anak mo. Naway Ikaw ang patuloy na maitaas sa aming buhay. Naway Ikaw ang patuloy naming maisa pamuhay. Naway Ikaw ang patuloy naming mailakad, Panginoon. Father God, panghawakan mo ang aming mga isip. Panghawakan mo ang aming mga puso, Panginoon. Panghawakan mo ang aming mga spirito, Lord. At hindi kami maging complacent, Panginoon. Bagkos, just like Apostle Paul said, Father God, that we will take every chance and opportunity in this life to serve you. To serve you, to worship you, Father. Because Apostle Paul said, to live is for Christ and to die is to gain. So thank you very much. Father God, Ikaw ang nakakakita. Ikaw ang nakakaalam on all the petition, on all the cries of your people. From the youngest to the eldest, people who were joining us online. Ganon din sa mga nakasama namin, Father God, na mga bago, Lord, sa araw na to. Father, we pray by faith that gaano man kaliit that seed of faith that are implanted, Lord God, to them. Lord God, find a way to water it find a way to nurture it so that at the end of the day, Father, Ikaw pa rin ang aani, Panginoon. Maraming maraming salamat. Thank you, Lord, for your presence from the beginning and up until the end of our worship service. Thank you, Lord, once again sa buhay ng mga tao na ginamit mo, Father, na tumayo, O God, na magminister sa aming lahat sa araw na to, Panginoon. Maraming salamat sa lahat ng mga tao na nakasama namin ngayong hapong ito, O God. Ganon din sa mga tao na nakasama namin online. Lord, sa aming paghihiwalay-hiwalay, Ikaw nawa ang patuloy na maglakad kasama ng bawat isa. Ikaw nawa ang patuloy, Panginoon, na magpakita ng iyong pagmamahal, ng iyong presensya, ng iyong kapangyarihan sa buhay ng bawat isa. And Lord, my personal prayer, Father God, is let each and every one of my brethren, Father God, live a victorious life, O Lord, in a manner and in a way, O God, in accordance to your will. My dear brothers and sisters, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship and in the company of the Holy Spirit be with you all evermore. Sige mga kapatid, let us go and serve the Lord. We will have no rest.
Amen. 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 Okay, let us uh, please welcome back the music team for our victorious song. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Sige po, patuloy po tayong uh, magpuri sa ating Panginoon. Sabi niya sa kanyang salita, let us continue to serve the Lord. Amen. Amen.
the Lord God bless you. Um, any any words? Um, above all, we I would like to thank the Lord God for giving me another one year of existence to be with this happy family. Very <laughs> happy and um, blessed to be with you, and looking forward for a many more, many more years to come. Sure. Uh, I want to thank God for keeping me alive this past year, helping get through things, and thank you for Alexis and Honor for pulling up. Alexis, stop recording me. I beg. Put the phone down. But yeah, thank God for everything. <laughs> thank you. Uh, we are uh, very blessed with your life. And uh, in reciprocation, yes, we are uh, uh, very happy and honored as well that uh, both of you are part of this family of God. Okay, let's pray for our dear brothers and sisters. Let's extend our hands towards them. Yes, Lord, our most gracious Lord and heavenly God. Indeed, Lord, you are the author of life. And Lord, we return the thanksgiving unto you. Even, Father God, as you, once again, you have given another year for our dear brother Albert and our dear sister Joanna, Father God, to spend, O oh God, in this wonderful world that you have created. And Father, indeed, O oh God, we are privileged, we are blessed that uh, we are a part of that wonderful life that you have given them. And Lord, we thank you so much for the wonderful opportunity that you are allowing all of us, Father God, to celebrate that special moment with them. And Father God, hearing the word and the message that comes from you, Lord, we know and we do believe as you have called them to be your worshipers, that Lord, dear brother Albert and dear sister Joanna will have no rest, Father God, because in their hearts, in their mind, and in their lives, they will always revere you as Lord and King. And thank you so much that as, they, as you continue to uh, number their years, Father God, we pray that Lord continue to walk with them, continue to guide them and lead them. And Father, we pray that you give them a spirit like unto Nehemiah, Father God. At uh, having that burden, developing that burden, Father God, not only, Father, strengthening the personal walls that pertains to you, Father God, but also, Lord, the collective and the body walls, O oh God, for this church for this family, Father God. And Lord, we thank you so much. Um, uh, thank you for the lives of their parents that you have used as your instrument and in bringing them here, O oh Lord God, in this world. For the case of Albert, our parents, his parents are with us. And uh, for Sister Joanna, uh, Father God, parents are in the Philippines. But uh, Father God, we pray and we thank you for their lives, O oh Lord God. And Father, uh, in behalf of this church, we release and we speak the heavenly blessing that comes from you sa buhay ng aming mga kapatid na ito. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Um, sige po. Before we close, can we have a ten, uh, five or seven minutes? Let's uh, go into our pairings. And um, uh, it's just in a more personal level. Uh, let's pray for one another. Let's pray for one another. Sige po, mga kapatid. Uh, let's uh, be in a pair. Let's pray for one another. So you go and find Glysa. Albert. Can you stay there with your friends? I want to join you three if you don't mind. Is that okay? Hallelujah. Sige po, let's uh, have a few moments and let's pray with one another. Um, uh, if the Lord is leading you, encourage the word with one another. Hallelujah. Did you want to go and go with Linda? You go and find Glysa. Ano? Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. 
Guys, you by group, they go by two, it's not by four. Uh, you, you pray together, you pray together. Uh, it's, let's, let's, re, it's stay, let's stay by twos, let's stay by twos. Mga kapatid, let's stay by twos po, let's stay by twos para mas uh, maging personal, mas maging personal. Uh, let's, let's stay by twos po para mas maging personal level po. Para lahat po tayo ay uh, matutong manalangin, lahat po tayo ay matutong uh, i-encourage ang bawat isa. Uh, this is our training ground as well. So like uh, Sister Annie, when the Lord given her the opportunity to share to uh, her friends, ay magkaroon po tayo ng training ground. Sige, let's stick by tus. Let's stick by tus. Amen. If your husband, your wife is more comfortable with you, then stay on the...